Hi, thank you for joining us for this pre-recorded video about boosting your students' oracy skills with the ESU's secondary school competitions. In this video, I'm going to provide an overview of the ESU's approach to oracy and oracy education, an in-depth look at our national secondary school competitions, and information on our free resources, how to get involved and the further support available. So we provide an in-depth look at the ESU's educational approach in another video. This slide will provide a shorter overview. So the ESU's approach to oracy, all of our competitions and programmes are underpinned by four key skill areas, which have been identified by oracy experts working at the ESU in the course of the last five to 10 years as the evidence base and practice in oracy education has emerged and especially in line with the oracy all part of parliamentary group which i'll come on to in a moment so our four key skill areas are reasoning and evidence so that's critical thinking argument generation and kind of analysis skills listening and response Organisation and prioritisation refers to teamwork, speech structure, clarity of thought, time management, the cognitive processes within oracy. And expression and delivery refers to use of body, use of voice, rhetoric and the more physical aspects of oracy education. We provide this framework so that both teachers and students are able to understand oracy as a holistic activity, as a series of skills which, with practice and attention over time, build our ability to learn through talk and how we learn to talk. It allows students to you know understand their own progress and gives us a really clear vocabulary to talk about oracy as a series of skills the broader reason as to why this matters and why we need oracy education and um, was really nicely outlined by the oracy appg's findings in 2021 where we can think about the benefits of oracy education in the classroom in that it improves academic outcomes, skills of literacy, vocabulary acquisition, confidence. It extends to students' life outside the classroom in terms of their well-being, confidence and mental health. And finally, access to a high quality oracy education confers, you know, lifelong benefits for students in terms of their ability to access employment and thrive in work or further study beyond school and compulsory education, the real aspect of social mobility, and finally in society at large by developing their citizenship skills and their agency. The report from the APPG also found that the provision of oracy education is very patchy with schools serving areas of deprivation uh, students in these schools having more barriers to a high quality oracy education compared to their more affluent counterparts so this really informs the esu's mission in expanding oracy high quality oracy education provision to all students especially those facing disadvantage um, and we firmly believe that oracy education, our programmes and the activities of, you know, the oracy network is going to be really instrumental in combating educational disadvantage and closing things like the attainment gap and closing the word gap. Whilst there are a few different options in terms of debating, performing and public speaking competitions available to schools, um, we think our competitions have some really unique, strong aspects. So the first, linking to our previous slide, is that all of our competitions and programmes are skills-based. So they align to our four skill sets, 
in terms of our mark scheme and what we are assessing students on. But this also corresponds to a really strong um, support and resource resource offer. So we have a, a really you know large library of free resources available on our website, which enable students to and teachers to you know target specific aspects of their RSC and develop this sustainably over time. So these are lots of fun games, exercises, speaking and discussion activities. The second aspect of this, which is really important to us, is that it's not about a one-time intervention or just those students who are competing, but encourages small group, debating club and whole class involvement in helping teams to prepare for their competitions, in being able to practice debate and public speaking and in the wider aspect of practicing those four skill sets which as we've seen confer benefits not just within the competition or within the classroom but wider academic attainment and social and emotional well-being. We think this is a great opportunity to build sustainable whole school cultures of talk and generate students excitement, especially when they can see, you know, oracy is a skills based activity that develops over time. It's not something that either you can do or you can't do, you know, it's for everyone and everyone can develop these skills. The second aspect of our competitions is that they are delivered by experts. And this is in two senses. The first being that the logistics and administration is handled by, you know, a team a full-time team here at the ESU's headquarters um, of our education officers and secondly that our adjudicators are individuals who've received high-level training in terms of safeguarding oracy education but also you know have a strong personal connection to the competitions either they are recent alumni and winners or are involved in professions that have a strong um, oracy demand, such as lawyers, teachers, uh, academics and university debating champions, and obviously those involved with actors and theatre. The third aspect is the cultural exchange element of our competitions. So the um, structure of our rounds mean that students get to meet a wide range of other young people from different schools and different backgrounds and have a really a friendly safe space to get to know each other. Students also get to meet um, adults, as we said kind of previously, from different professions who they might have not had, you know, lots of face time with before. Those from, you know, legal professions and different academic areas that give an insight to kind of life beyond school. And the final two aspects of our competitions attest to how we really promote high quality RSC education. So we can think of RSC as learning through talk and learning how to talk. Our competitions promote learning through talk in that often the topics and motions um, encourage students to apply their curricular learning to current affairs and issues beyond school. It encourages critical thinking of, you know, arguments, perspectives different to those of the students, or sometimes topics they might not have thought about before, and having conversations and discussions to engage with that knowledge and develop an understanding. Conversely, the competitions promote learning how to talk in terms of offering this really structured, exciting, summative opportunity of delivering a speech, standing in front of an audience, thinking of how to persuade your audience and your judge to agree with your perspective, how we can use expression and delivery to accentuate that persuasiveness and the other skills involved. So that's a, a brief overview about why our competitions are very unique in promoting a whole school sustainable culture of oracy. So 
on this slide um, you can see some comments from teachers about all three of our competitions so these are schools from across the country and teachers from different subjects who are highlighting the way in which the ESU's competitions have helped their students and their schools overall. I'd encourage you to maybe pause the video and have a read. The ESU's Performing Shakespeare competition encourages Key Stage 3 pupils to perform a monologue or duologue from any of Shakespeare's texts whichever way they choose. The competition for students in years 7 to 9 not only brings to life the Shakespeare study requirement in the national curriculum, but also enables students to develop their creativity, their confidence and their ability to express themselves, important skills in the classroom and life beyond. Teachers are provided with the necessary resources to run an in-school competition for round one, and the best entries, as selected by schools, are sent forward to the second rounds of the competition in March and April, the regional finals in May, all of which include an educational workshop for students um, followed by the performances from students um, in that local area. The grand final is held in a prestigious professional theatre in 2022. This was the Globe in London. So the grand final is judged by top professionals in the acting and theatre professions. All students receive general as well as individual feedback at the second regional and grand finals to really promote that continual improvement. So schools can enter as many pupils as they wish in the first round as this is an internal school event. However, the ESU has resources and support available so that schools can feel confident in running this first round. In some schools, um, all students in a year group take part in the competition as part of the English or drama scheme of work. Normally, three to four performances from each school go through to the second rounds of the competition. So the task for students, they have up to three minutes to perform their selected monologue or duologue. No costumes or props are needed nor used. Um, however, students can use a chair if they wish in their performance. So it really is all about the words and the acting. Before the act, students have up to two minutes to talk about the piece they have selected, uh, the details of the play and the scene itself, the character they are playing, why they've chosen the piece and what they aim to achieve in their performance. This oracy aspect is as important as the performance that comes later, so that we are promoting the four skill sets through performing Shakespeare and ultimately encouraging students to really discover a love um, for Shakespeare that will stay with them throughout their studies. So the prestigious ESU Churchill Public Speaking Competition is sponsored by the International Churchill Society. It's the largest public speaking competition in England and Wales with over 400 teams participating. The grand final is held at Churchill College, Cambridge at the end of April each year. So schools can enter up to two teams with students from years nine to 11. And each team comprises of a speaker, a questioner and a chairperson. These three different roles allow students to practice and excel in very different skill sets and the competition's unique format, which pairs the speaker from one school with the chair and questioner from another, encourages quick thinking and relationship building. So it's not confrontational. Most of all, it's fun and a great way for students to develop their oracy skills in a friendly, collaborative environment. The volunteer judging teams involve people of all ages from 18 to 80, with detailed individual feedback given at the local rounds, the regional finals, the semi-finals and the final. The ESU provides between four and six topics and students can select the one that most appeals to them from this range. Rounds one and two have a topic, the same topic, and then the regional finals and beyond schools are able to choose a second topic. Examples of recent speeches given by students are that school examinations should be abolished, individual action on climate change is pointless 
and essential vaccines should be compulsory. Be a vegan and save the world. And if they don't give you a seat at the table, bring a folding chair. No team has the same topic as another in their geographical area. And topics are a mixture of the very specific, the very general, and quotations from famous or notable people. Students are welcome to agree or disagree with their prompt. It's entirely up to the speaker. So the roles of the three individual pe uh, you know, team members. The speaker speaks for five minutes on their topic and then answers questions from the questioner from another school, as well as questions from the audience. Speakers therefore develop their reasoning and evidence skills in terms of preparing a speech, but also their listening res and response in this impromptu speaking. The chairperson has a task of running the whole presentation, nurturing a positive environment, introducing the other members of their team and keeping the event running to time, as well as chairing questions from the audience and offering a vote of thanks at the end of the presentation. Finally, the questioner is not an inter interrogator and is not there to confront or trip up the speaker, but rather to tease out new ideas question the core assumptions of a speech and follow up on points made by the speaker so that everyone gets a deeper understanding of the topic that was presented. Questioners develop the crucial skill of being able to speak and think impromptu and on their feet. We say three to five students are allowed per team as this allows um, different students to swap into the roles um, between each round, allowing for a little bit of flexibility, as we know things like exams, sickness can affect schools at any time of the year. So finally, I have the pleasure of uh, introducing the ESU's Schools Mace debating competition. So all of our competitions are open to schools in England and Wales um, from 2022-2023 onwards. Um, and this competition is for years 7 through 13, though we often find it's more uh, students in years 11 to 13 that participate, simply because the other competitions are open to the younger year groups. So there are three to five students per team, um, and any three of those five students can participate in a debate. The ESU deploys the extended MACE format, which is really um, accessible and simply structured debate. I'll uh, give a brief overview of what that looks like now. So each team has three speakers, the first speaker, the second speaker and a summary speaker. So the role of the first speaker is to introduce the arguments for their side of the house and if in proposition to give a definition of the motion. So the first speaker really has the job of delivering a team's most important arguments and setting up the case or the direction that their team will take. The first speaker of the opposition has a similar role in terms of delivering their team's most important arguments and setting up the direction that the rest of the team will take, but also um, responding or rebutting to the arguments that they've heard from the first proposition speaker. Then we come on to the second proposition speaker who um, has the job of rebutting the arguments heard by the first opposition speaker and um, furthering the case for their side of the house by delivering um, secondary and tertiary arguments for their team. Then very parallel, the second opposition speaker once again responds to the argument uh, from the speaker before them and adds further arguments, examples and evidence to strengthen the case for their side of the house. Then we come to the audience questions. So the judge or the chairperson uh, takes responsibility for eliciting um, questions from the audience, usually one to two for each side. The teams have um, maybe 30 seconds to a minute. And then this is where the summary speakers who have a kind of special role 
um, participate in the debate. So the, the summary speaker from opposition is invited to speak where they will answer the questions um, proposed by the floor. They won't offer any new arguments, but they will summarise the arguments of their team and compare it to the material heard from the other side and give us um, a summary, uh, an evaluation as to why their team has won. So they're trying to persuade us, almost like a very biased judge. Then the debate is closed by the summary speaker from Proposition, who in their speech answers the questions proposed by the floor and gives us an evaluation as to why they think the arguments proposed by their team, as well as the rebuttal, defeated the other side. The first and second speakers of each team are able to receive points of information. So these are short um, interjections posed by the other side. However, it's not a free for all. So speeches are usually seven minutes and the first and last minute of a speech is protected. I appreciate this is um, sometimes hard to keep track of verbally, but we have the image on the slide is taken from a resource where there's a nice kind of step-by-step -step diagram illustrating the process of a debate. So each round, um, teams will debate a different motion and the motions are released very far in advance to give um, teams opportunity to prepare. We also really encourage um, involving a debating club, um, a whole class, friends, peers and teammates in acting as opposition, in proposing questions and helping a team to prepare. The first round um, of all of the public speaking and the school's mace are delivered via Zoom. This is to make the first round as accessible to schools as possible, reducing difficult travel, often in the winter, and also promoting a really emerging part of um, essential digital skills, which is <laughs> speaking um, for video and speaking online and speaking for broadcast. The second round of the competition, the regional finals and the grand finals day are all in person um, within our 12 set regions. So schools will meet um, opponents from within their broad geographical region. So we do our best to um, make sure everyone has a fair and reasonable distance to travel. Another really exciting thing about the school's MACE is that our adjudication panels um, are all not only trained by the ESU, but will be recruited for a specific background, either as um, high achieving debaters themselves or members of the community or professionals that use oracy and debating as part of their day-to-day -day, um, work and life. So I have spent some time going through the individual details of each competition. Um, however, we end up at the ESU, I'd like to stress our unified kind of approach to delivering our competitions to keep things as easy and kind of quick for schools as possible. So we have one registration form for all three competitions. On our website, we have handbooks um, so detailed PDFs aimed for both students and teachers, which go through the format, the rules, um, top tips and advice for participating in the competitions. These are available on our website with a link included at the end of this video. And on our YouTube channel, we also have um, lots of video guides. So there's top tips, introductions to the skill sets and examples of whole rounds of the competitions so that everyone um, before they participate in the competition can get an idea of what the um, opportunity looks like. So we have local through to national rounds, meaning the maximum number of schools are able to compete and kind of build links and networks in their local area. We've got resources to support whole school involvement as well. So 
on our website you can find resources for lesson plans, for linking oracy into curricula as well as co-curricular teaching, and setting up a debating or discussion club. And finally, um, we want learning to be sustainable and to promote a whole school culture of oracy. As was kind of said at the beginning of the presentation, we have a real emphasis on feedback, um, really friendly, constructive feedback at all stages of the competition. Obviously, the aspirational aspect of winning and progressing is really important and really motivational. But at round one of the competitions within the in-school rounds, um, we offer individual and general feedback to all teams competing so that they can know what they've done well and steps they can take to improve. So all the links to the sort of resources and videos is included at the end of the video. So the competitions are um, an annual, close to a year long um, progress and they're planned around things like school exams and holidays so as not to be too burdensome. So the key date is that registration for competitions is now open and closes on the 7th of October. The first rounds of the public speaking and the school's mace competition begin in November. And the performing Shakespeare has a bit more of a generous timeline in that the in-school component of the competition um, can run from November all the way through to the end of January with the second rounds of the competition beginning in February and March, and then the grand finals um, coming towards the spring term and after Easter. This um, key date chart is available on our website and is just a really handy way to keep track of what's going on and when, especially um, if you've got your school entered into more than one competition, which we um, really, really encourage we think each competition reinforces the learning of the other and they all follow our four key skill areas providing really comprehensive and holistic um, opportunity for oracy education and development so as we come to the end of this video i just really want to reiterate how our competitions for england and wales do boost our culture of oracy and a whole school um, approach to learning to talk and learning through talk. So whatever your starting point, whether you have a really established debating club or it's your first time with students public speaking, our competitions can en enhance your oracy provision by providing a really structured and supported opportunity uh, to participate. We think the competitive elements really motivate students to try their best and raise their aspirations. Often that external motivating factor um, can really encourage students to engage and participate. And it provides a really nice um, gradual kind of learning opportunity to work towards. And again, the opportunity to meet schools from you know, other areas, other backgrounds can do a lot for encouraging students to work together <laughs> um, as well as then learning from peers. We also think students learn hugely from watching and working with other schools. So not just those who are participating, but the opportunity to perhaps be in the audience, to listen to other speeches, to understand young people in their own words and their own voice. Um, can be really useful, especially for those findings from the APPG that go beyond academic learning and towards aspects of citizenship and agency. Of course, we think our competitions really help with curricular learning, things like um, the National Curriculum for GCSE English Language, English Literature, um, extended project qualifications, but also these academic activities which are so important, though not necessarily encoded in the curriculum, Things like being able to give a presentation, feeling confident in interview, being able to ask questions, feeling um, in control under timed conditions such as in exams, and being able to listen and collaborate with other people. 
Um, for 2022, we have introduced a hybrid format where the first round of the competitions will be delivered over Zoom. I think we want to stress that this is really important, that oracy is evolving and the landscape of education is evolving, and that being able to equip students with feeling confident in speaking both in a room full of people and to um, a virtual context is now a necessary and absolutely day-to-day -day aspect of communication. Finally, not only do students benefit in terms of a culture of oracy, but the competition enhances a teacher's own oracy skills in terms of CPD and gaining a specific um, experience in coaching, debating or public speaking. But we also, a lot of our resources um, promote some reflection on learning through talk and teaching through talk and um, provide lots of kind of advice, hints and tips for managing and facilitating classroom interaction. Finally, and we can't stress this enough, we are so keen for whole classes to participate and support students in competitions so that the more you take on a squad approach or a club approach or a whole class approach and the more that the benefits of competitions and RC can be transmitted from the most confident or more experienced speakers and learners to those that are less confident and have more growth in their RC education to contend with. It just really normalises students being able to speak and find their own voice and feeling listened to. So um, a final component of making sure that this learning and this whole school oracy culture is sustainable is that we don't want you to just participate in our competitions and never speak to us again. We see we meet schools where they are. We have a whole host of free resources to promote learning through talk and learning to talk with activities on our website as well as our monthly newsletter. And all of our resources have been developed by experts, so oracy education practitioners, often with a strong academic and practice background. We offer Discover Your Voice workshops, which now have had a refresh since the pandemic. We have focuses on debating, public speaking, performing, or general oracy skills. These are a great opportunity for a half day or a full day intervention delivered by our expert oracy mentors to really spark interest in these activities and also to have a really illustrative example of how oracy activities can be delivered. All of the resources um, used in Discover Your Voice workshops are available for a school to keep and replicate which we actually really encourage. So Discover Your Voice workshops are delivered directly to students. We also provide CPD workshops, which can be on a full day, half day or short session basis, where our senior oracy trainers work with schools to identify existing best practice and potential barriers to oracy being developed and deployed in your classroom all with the more special focus on co-curricular activities like setting up a debating club or setting up um, a drama club. <laughs> Finally, um, we're in our second year of the ESU Oracy Affiliate School status. So this is for any school that engages with the ESU through our programmes, competitions, newsletter or events, um, whereby we have a specific logo that schools can use on the website and in their communications to demonstrate that their school is dedicated to raising the status of oracy and bringing and providing a high quality oracy education for all their learners. So thank you for joining me for this overview of the ESU's competitions. Some next steps which you may find useful is simply visiting our website and having a look at our resources, 
videos and handbooks, as well as teacher and student testimonials about our competitions. Um, you can also sign up for our newsletter, whereby we release um, new resources every fortnight that are not on the website. And often these are both thematic, responding to things like Black History Month and Pride Month. Absolutely, I encourage you to enter our competitions. It's one really easy form, which is open from now until October. And finally, if you have any questions or have an interest in the additional support mentioned, please do send us an email to competition at ESU.org. Thank you so much um, and we hope you stay in touch.